Good morning. This is Steve Finland welcoming you on February 28th, 2021 on behalf of the First Church of West Bridgewater. Welcome to everybody who takes the time to listen to these condensed versions of our Sunday service consisting of a sermon, a song, and a prayer. I'm happy to be singing today number 395, How Can I Keep From Singing? A very wonderful song. We start with the sermon. What were you arguing about? Based on verses from Mark chapter 9. Six days later Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen, until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. May God add his blessing to my interpretation today. Well, how do you handle an experience that is completely unprecedented and inexplicable in any normal daily terms? How do you interpret and accept a miraculous occurrence? At the very least, it is not easy. The three apostles probably did not know how to interpret what they saw on the mountain. On this occasion, Jesus is transfigured before his inner circle of apostles shines with some kind of heavenly light and confers with two beings who suddenly appear on the mountain. Peter, not knowing what to say, offers to build tents for Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. Then a heavenly voice, probably the same one who spoke at Jesus' baptism, says, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. You can't blame Peter for being astounded and hardly knowing what to say. After the revelatory moment is over, Jesus solemnly orders his disciples not to tell anyone about what they have seen until after the Son of Man should rise from the dead. So this goes along with the three warnings and predictions of his death and resurrection that he made to the apostles in Mark 8, 9, and 10. First, there is the glorious and transcendent self-revelation of Jesus then there is a reminder that he will die and rise from the dead. We don't know exactly how this experience affected Peter, James, and John, but it is possible that it had no moral or spiritual effect at all. For these same men, later in the chapter, join in the argument amongst the apostles about who should be greatest in the kingdom, who should be secretary of defense, who should be secretary of state. They still have as much proud and personal ambition after the transfiguration as they had before it. Does this show that miracles have no real effect on people's minds? That people learn nothing even from the most astonishing visions? Maybe. I want to keep this as a possible lesson from this passage. We see even Jesus' inner circle of apostles subject to proud ambition. Are we that way too? Do we also learn nothing from spectacular experiences? But do we only learn from moral reflection and humble insights, either through sudden insight or 
seasoned with the passage of time. Jesus is leading his apostles towards that kind of conclusion. He schools them by placing a child in their midst and says, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. He uses a child to symbolize himself. Reception of and respect for a child stands for reception of him and respect for God. It's a remarkable passage that raises the status of children. What does he choose as an image for himself? Instead of the image of dazzling self-revelation, he chooses the image of a child in their midst to be a symbol for himself. You need to be welcoming and respectful of the child to show your welcome and respect for Jesus and the Father. So it's a strange and unexpected lesson, certainly unexpected for the apostles who live in a very male-centered culture. Women, and especially children, are not considered very important at all. And here is Jesus making the welcoming of a child of central importance. A story that starts out with the miraculous and luminous transfiguration ends up with a lesson in humility and respect for children. First there is the unprecedented and dazzling disclosure, and then there is an encounter with a child. And the event he treats as important for spiritual living is the latter. Both say something about Jesus. The transformation shows his divinity. The saying about the child shows his tender-heartedness and speaks of a line of connection from heavenly father to divine son to ordinary child. In the same way, Jesus welcomes each and every one of us as a child of God every day. Altogether, the passage is a caution against getting too self-important or religiously arrogant. The main command that emerges is to welcome the child. Even if you've seen a blazing revelation, your job is to be good to the child. The whole implied command is don't aspire to high position or dazzling power in the kingdom. The kingdom is about welcoming the child. Learn to live humbly. He was ready to treat an ordinary child as more interesting and important than a supernatural revelation. What a surprising message. No wonder they were continually amazed by Jesus. He was glorious, and yet he glorified humility. He had miraculous power in heaven and on earth, yet he called for them to be attentive to the least of their compatriots, the children. So let us be as little children, trusting and loving Jesus and welcoming other children in the family of God. O oh God, be with us now and ever after as we grow ever closer to you through the many miracles of daily living. Amen. And now... This wonderful song, How Can I Keep From Singing, verses 1, 3, and 4. My life flows on in endless song Above earth's lamentation I catch the sweet though far off hymn That hails a new creation no storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock i'm clinging since christ is lord of heaven and earth how can i keep from singing what though my joys and comforts die the Lord my Savior liveth. What though the darkness gather round, songs in the night he giveth. 
No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? The peace of Christ makes fresh my heart, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am his. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Indeed, how can I keep from singing when I know Jesus is my creator, my savior, and my friend? And so let us pray to the Savior for our sick and recovering people. Jesus, we pray for Maria and Tom and Chrissy, Allie and Sharon and Eric as they all recover from the COVID. Help them to get all their strength back and then to get vaccinated as the rest of us must be so that we may keep ourselves and each other healthy. Help us, O oh God, to do the right thing. Help us to do your will, seek your will always. And we pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So be it. Let us be happy as children of God. And let us welcome the child. Extending the ethics of spiritual living around us in our encounters with all people. And so, think of Jesus throughout the week, uttering silent prayers or word-voiced ones. Keep Jesus in your heart throughout this week. Thanks be to God.